I was going through the same thing. And so um, after so much drug abuse, then started the physical abuse between us. My Lord. Between us. And uh, I began to participate in the abuse as well to defend myself and to um, – uh, I, I just I just I was a fighter too. I, yeah. I wasn't just going out like that. And I saw that my children would be watching, my and, Lord. and and we would tap the house, and not only the house, the house everywhere we would go. And, oh, Lord, and that was all I, I, I don't yeah, oh, it was, if we went to the club, if we went to someone's home for a barbecue, we'd end up paying for something that we tore oh, off there. Girl. And 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 black eyes and busted lips was a oh, noise. God. It was a norm for, for, for me and for us, and, and I just thought that this was just second nature. And then I wonder why my makeup looks so good today, yeah, because yeah. you become a master at covering <laughs> up up. everything, you know. And really, it, it, it wasn't uh, a bad thing. Like, I didn't feel like it was a bad thing then. I just felt like it was part of life yes, yes. until my husband went to prison mm. for this. It was just a history, a history, a history of it. Oh and so, God. so much so till he had to end up doing uh, two years. And oh, it really God. brought uh, uh, a realization to both of us yeah. that this behavior was not becoming of who the people that we wanted to be. Yeah, no. And so uh, after that time in prison, he got out and uh, he was already saved, but Jesus didn't look good to me mm. uh, because of the way that it was presented. And, and because of the actions and the behavior. And so it just didn't look good to me. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, oh, Lord. And when he, he got out of prison, we still got back together like it was the thing to do yeah. and, and and still accepted him back and all these things. And and the violence was gone, um, but some other things were still were present mm-hmm. there. And so we had to learn to forgive each other. We had to go through a period where, we had to learn each other over again how to not do this and how yes. to do this and, and how to sit down with our children and My tell our God. children that we had made a mistake yes, and God. that uh, how this is not the behavior that your parents should display to your children because your kids will reciprocate that same behavior. That's exactly right. I'm going to look at that they will, they, will, they will do the very That's same right. thing that they've seen their mother and father mm-hmm, do. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I, I got saved in 2010. Mm-hmm. For myself. It wasn't yeah. for anybody else. It was yeah. for me. And so I began a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, and I began to understand how um, a, a man should be able to mm-hmm. should talk to a woman and how a woman should be respected and how uh, that domestic violence is so prominent yeah, in the Christian yeah. and how it's so hid away yeah. and how it's so prominent in the church and how People are suffering. Women are suffering. Men are suffering. People are being abused, and nobody talks about it. Well, let's get the word out because everybody, you know, everybody always saying they had no script. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We got the word yeah. out today. And so the word says in Ephesians chapter five, yes, it is. get your Bible. Let's keep it real, real, real. Mm-hmm. This is the part that's always had me wondering. Why I stayed. See, the Come reason on. why I stayed was this chapter right here. Come on. It easy says right here, um, for your husband's no, home, submitting yourself. See, mm-hmm. that word submit. Mm-hmm. Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're going to read that book. Submitting uh, yourself one to another. It goes on to say, mm-hmm. why submit yourself? Unto your own oh, husband, husband. as mm-hmm. unto the Lord, mm-hmm. for the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, mm-hmm. even as Christ is the head. Of the wife. Okay, we we make sure everybody put the phone on star six, please. And he is the savior of the body. Mm-hmm. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wife. Now see here it is. Mm-hmm. It says, mm-hmm. therefore, as the church is subject. Under Christ, Christ mm-hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, here, here's the problem right here. Everything. Because everything, I think your phone went out. So everything is not everything. everything because I, everything. Heard, I heard that everything means Teresa. Uh-oh. I heard that everything means Uh-oh. pornography. I heard that everything means, you know, uh, if, if he want to clown you or whatever, you need to submit. Mm-hmm. You need to be quiet. 
quiet. Mm-hmm. Women need to be quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, you, everything means you need to do whatever I ask you to do, mm-hmm. even when it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like neighbor. Uh-oh. So, so you, you want to just have us all killed and go to hell with a handbasket. Well. The devil is alive. Yes, he is. When I learned that this year, everything, and I mean that, it means everything that is of holiness, yes. of, of God. Mm-hmm. And then it goes on to say, husband, love your wife. Yeah. Even as Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also loved the church yeah. and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that it might be present it to himself, glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, not a black eye, mm-hmm. you know, not to live mm-hmm. above, yeah. not to children scared, or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. Mm-hmm. Why? So all men, here it is. What, what, did they leave that one out? They left it out. Okay. So all men to love their wives as their, their own, own body. I'm going to stop right there. That's good. As their own body. body. Mm-hmm. And so you don't bust me upside my head, mm-hmm. and I'm supposed to stay. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to submit to, mm-hmm. okay, my back too. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can take a pull out of my half if you want to. The mm-hmm. devil is alive. I'm cooking some grease. Oh, and grease. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We're just kidding. Yeah. But what we're trying to get you to see here is that on the real, real, we have too many women that are staying in relationships behind these scriptures right here out of spiritual ignorance. Mm-hmm. Now, I ain't trying to hear nothing you, nothing, nothing you type about. Uh, you got the scripture read wrong. And all day long, it says, as you love your body, so love your wife. Mm-hmm. We ain't got to go through all the scriptures mm-hmm. or none of the other in, in the mouth. Mm-hmm. The most important part is that we have marriages like yours. When you made a decision that you wanted God more than anything, same as myself. When I made a decision I wanted the Lord more than anything, he told me, you out of order. You sort of love me more than God. Lord. Help us all today. Today. The, the problem comes in there that they don't love themselves. That's exactly right. So, so someone that does not love themselves or care or look at themselves as great cannot look at you that That's way. That's correct. Can't be the queen. And so they try to tear us down and and, and 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 take away our integrity and things like that. And 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 here we have to present ourselves to everybody else, mm-hmm. looking uh, like who did it and what, <laughs> and, and, and and trying to be the good wife yes. and trying to be submissive and trying to stay. And that's not what God meant. I know. No, 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 no. God did no. not mean for your your husband to hurt you and for you to have to hide behind things and, and, and to buy Max concealer department no. out to be able to cover up what it is that you're dealing with. Well, I didn't know about makeup. I was so green. I just had to say the baby hit me with the rattler. That was the one that he gave me. No, that lie is played out. Uh, uh, I fell down the steps. I fell in the shower. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, all that's played out. You know, people are tired of telling that lie. And I know a whole bunch of women on here that's, that, that's tired of living that way. Mm-hmm. And it's no way to live. It's no way to uh, walk on eggshells in your right. own oh, house oh, oh. where you're paying bills and, and where you own half of everything that's there. It, it's no it way to live. No, no, it does not. But the, the, the sad part about this is, like you said, what you were living, your children watched. Mm-hmm. And you got to know those that are watching. It's a ripping effect. Okay? Yes, it is. So many marriages that are going through this right now. You thinking that your daughter's in his in her room, your son is in his room, yeah. just holding their ears, saying, "I don't want to hear it anymore." But what they're doing, that spirit is resting in that house. That's it. And now the very thing that you're thinking that because your son don't like it, your daughter don't like it, they're actually going through it themselves. That's you that's know. That's and I never never forget the day that I got a call from a woman that told me my son has just kicked her door in and beat his beat her daughter up. And here I am, what's right. not my boy? Yeah. You know, and the one that said I'll never be like my dad, he just beat the girl up. Now, see, we got to understand that what we are doing, many of them have already got it because it's already in the blood. That's but it. when they see it start to be acted out, it starts to, like, give it an injection of the hell to go ahead and start manifesting right before our eyes. It manifests. Now, that is it. That is it. It manifests in the atmosphere. And, right. and now everybody wants to... Uh, uh, the whole family is abusive to angry. one another. Somebody comes in the door, dad comes in the door, and everybody scatters like roaches because nobody wants to be in the atmosphere uh, of that person. I know. You know, and it, it, it's hell. It, it, it's not the way to live. I know. And it's not the 
wait a minute. So we've talked about this part. Let's talk about how we can get women or men who are going to. Because we got a lot of just better women as well oh, now. Because, you know, as I got married and was single, you know, all those years, and then decided I was going to get married to the last husband I had, you know, uh, I was very just People call me just now, but it don't matter. Don't matter. Don't matter. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so I was very just during that time, because, I mean, I went through a lot of abuse, and then, you know, taking things from me, and, you know, being raped, and abuse, so I was on, the, on guard all the time. So when I got with this man, I believe that God wanted us to be together so that I can grow for you, for your family, for me to be able to get you women to see to make your what you're going through, through, why you are still there, why you are going through this genetic mode, because... Now you're trying to figure out, am I going to stay because I don't want to be with nobody else? I don't want to try nothing else on besides I don't want to, I don't want to get no diseases. But yet you stay there because you fear Ephesians chapter 5 that you're not submitting life, but at the same time you're miserable. You're self-medicating. You're doing all these things. So when I was there, I made a decision, no, this is not about you anymore. You're not my God. I love you, but I don't love you more than God. And so let's get the help that we need so that we can be a family. But when couples don't want to get help. That's correct. When one want to say that it's your fault and you need help and you Jezebel and don't want to, don't want to admit that they too are Ahab because we, we Jezebel oh. until they got what they want. See, they like the strong woman to be able to get what they need. And then once they get what they need, send them through school, you know, got them, they ain't never had a pair of tennis shoes or uh, label clothes. You know, we done dressed them. We done got them all ready. And then once they got dressed and they got ready, now you get to them. Yeah. Now you control them. But as long as Ahab was getting what he needed from uh-huh. Jezebel, mm-hmm. all is well. Mm-hmm. But as soon as Jezebel started being stronger, now you, 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 you out of line. You out of order because they got a little scripture in their head now. But what I'm seeing in that mode is that we need to get willing to understand that it is not God's desire for your marriage to end not. or that you go through right. divorce. It's not. It's right. not a desire. Right. Because that was the first institution was for mm-hmm. And in that perspective, our ultimate goal for here tonight is to get the people to understand that when you are flowing in this place with you and I are talking about where it is becoming abusive with verbally or emotionally yes. abusive. Mentally. Because we, we, ne- mm-hmm. we never want to talk about the mental part of it. Right. we got a lot of first ladies and a lot of women who are ministry that are going through a lot of mm-hmm. emotional name calling and everything mm-hmm. else. And this is the reason why we're doing this because too many people are getting harmed and it doesn't just affect the two that are going through it. It's the whole house. Everybody in the household. And then continue on, it's going to be generational. It's going to affect their children and their children. And, and, and I mean, how can we be the leaders that we need to be in our churches and, and, and in our communities if uh, we just cuss each other out in the car on the way to church Jesus and now I, I'm watching you pray for everybody, uh-huh. but you ain't picked up a Bible this year for the family. Lord, uh-huh. help. You know, I, I'm just saying, and, and I'm not saying... That, that's what's happening with me. I'm saying that that is happening that is with a lot of people period. that we counsel, uh, a, a lot of people that we that we, we see every day in the church, that's busting right. the door down every Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, every time it's a conference, and, and, and it's talking about deliverance. Yeah. It ain't no deliverance it ain't happening. Going on. Nothing is happening. Uh, women and men got to learn to get uh, really to lay their self down. Yeah. This flesh right here, we got to lay this down. We gotta say I'm sorry. We gotta take our kids to the table and say we've done this wrong. I'm sorry. This is not working no more. This is not who we are, who we're supposed to be, and we need some counseling. Please, someone, please put your phone on star six. I don't want to hang up the conference line, but I will. God bless you. Uh, uh, many times we are too proud to say I need some help. Like yeah. I don't know how to do this, and I ain't been known how to do it for the, like this been going on. Yes. Like, this been happening. How I need help. Yes, yes. But I think the hardest part for us all, you know, is recognizing the fact that we do need help. Um, yes. And we do need to get the counsel that we need. Uh, and just admit that the family is in a mess. Yeah. I don't care how many uh, credentials you got. I don't care if you're a bishop, whatever, fivefold you are. We all got some issues. And we need to face our part in the mess. We do. Okay, so mm-hmm. when I begin to look back over my years and dealing with people and counseling people, 
you get people who will come to sessions who will say, it's her, okay. or no, it's him. <laughs> but what the deal is, like I always say, no, it's y'all. Because you need to understand that when you become married, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. Whether you call him stupid or her crazy or right. her sad or him skinny, whatever, yeah. you still talking about yourself. Because mm-hmm. once you come to this covenant, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. And so you call crazy all you want, then you're crazy too. Mm-hmm. Because you married this crazy person. Yeah. But my, my, my issue is that we've got to understand that there is a way that we can process some of these things. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I'd like to uh, bring out pertaining to families getting prepared to uh, so I can look at some of the things that you and I shared here tonight about my family. I came from a very abusive family. Mm-hmm. Uh, my daddy would beat my mom was like he be like it was like a, a regiment or something. Yeah. Like whenever he would come out, come from work, it's like it was beat beat day. Yeah. So we had to sleep in our clothes, you know, because we you know we had to run. Yeah. You know that night, but we got families right now that are like you said on eggshells. These kids, yeah. you know, just shaking dad home, mom home, yeah. you yeah. know, because it ain't all the time the woman getting beat. It's the women. I mean, the woman getting the women uh, uh, yeah. doing things. Me. Mm-hmm. And so we got to know that when you have this kind of thing going on, we got to look at, let me, like I always tell people, if a woman, the majority of the time women that call my counseling center are women. Yes. And they're in violence yes. or going through trouble. Married. It's women. Mm-hmm. And my question is, is he with So if he's with it, then maybe we can get a hold in the tail. Mm-hmm. But when we only have the woman who is coming right. and the man is not willing, or vice versa, she's not willing, right. then what are we going to do? I always say, then let's work on you. If you want your marriage, let's just work on you then. Mm-hmm. But then at some point, I pray that God will bring him yeah. or her. Yeah. But we do need to work on ourselves. Mm-hmm. I want to see, kind of jump back, as we were talking before we got on here, mm-hmm. when we were sharing about how, like you said, they have this facade mm-hmm. at church, but then at home you're somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, we get prepared for church. You're looking beautiful and everything. You may not even hear that from your mate. But he might say it to somebody else. Oh, you look very uh, nice in that. But you done dick down and yeah. you ain't hearing a word from them. Right. But when you get to the church, oh, this girl's got the beautiful dress you got yeah. on today. But you ain't said nothing to me. Right. But see, we had these things going on. Same thing. You wonder why I'm mad, why I'm sleeping on the edge of the bed. Well, all day long you said nothing to me. But all them women at the church, you done talked to all day oh. long. And we done passed each other for two weeks in the house and we ain't spoke. Here's the thing. This is not. This is not a marriage. It's not God. But you're preaching at the pulpit. See, this is is the problem I do have with the Christian stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we need to look at what are we doing at home first. Ministry begins at home. Not just sitting at the table eating with me. You in at the table, but you ain't got nothing to say to your boy. You ain't got nothing to say to me. All you got to say was it was good or grunt Mm -hmm. and gone on to the bed or back to your pornography. Who you make in love with at Uh-oh. night, you know, while I'm asleep. Uh-huh. My situation that I wanted to bring up to those that are watching was how important it is that we as women, we do need to watch what we're saying. Yeah. We do need to watch when we say. What we, we do. Say. We you do. know, because a lot of these men, you knew he was had on the edge of, how to say, rage or aggression when you were dating them. Yeah. You saw the little sign, yeah. but you went out and thought that your sex was going to work it out. Yeah, I know I did. You ain't that good, boo. I thought I did. It, it, no, it don't get that way. It, it, it ain't that good. It's not that good. I'm trying to tell you. I thought I did. No, it, no. So it's going to work. No. But see, that's what a whole bunch of no. them think that sex is no. going to work it out. No. You see? And then, so when they, they see the sex, sex ain't working out, then they think it didn't make the gift with it. So I start finding things. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. Mm-mm. So you start finding things, that ain't working. Mm-mm. So now you don't turn from... You so fine. Mm-hmm. Oh, you my popsicle, my ice cream, yeah. my sticker. Oh, oh, the 4th of July now, and the last one in the box. Now uh-huh. you done yeah. turn to you be. Yeah. You ate. Yeah. And you forgot my you name. You stupid. Yeah. So now that's because I got what I want from you. Mm-hmm. I see now for real that you are controlling. Mm-hmm. So we as women need to watch those areas because I didn't realize I had to go get some help. I hope we, I hope we helping you. You need to probably go get some help. We, we we think it's I think that we think it's like uh, saying that we we're missing something if yeah. we need, say we need help. You know I I I don't know I, I don't know how many times I thought that uh oh, look only white people need help only <laughs> white people are the ones that go to counseling. You know uh, 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 black people ain't gonna go. You know black and, people don't and here I'm in a full yeah. interracial yeah. 
uh, marriage, and, and both of us was crazy, mm-hmm. though, you know, so we wouldn't get no counseling here nor there. So, <laughs> but it helped us. Yeah, it, 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 it helped does us. help. It does. It does. Mm-hmm. But I was getting at that to say, you know, back, I was trying to back up for what we're talking, we got on here, about how I thought for myself mm-hmm. that I need to work on, you know, now I was married at the time when I was doing this evangelical movement. Yes. And my husband was okay with yes. it. But I was alone by myself. Yes. And I would go out in third ward. And how important it was to me to be able to minister to the men first. So I would go to these barber shops. I would go to the shop too. But I would primarily go to the barber shop. And I would ask the owner, who's the owner? And they would tell me, I said, well, can I get, can you allow me about 10 or 15 minutes? I don't want to pass out no track. I don't want to do anything. I just want to share what happens to my faith to the men. And they would go, why do you want to share? We can clearly see, you know, what happened. You was in a wreck. Mm-hmm. I said, no. Will you give me a chance to let them ask me? Yeah. Tell me what they think? Yeah. So each one that would be in a chair would tell me, oh, you was in a fire. No, nah, man, it's a wreck. And I said, okay, let me tell you what it was. My children's father took a 12 gauge shotgun in close frame, put it between my eyes, and pulled the trigger. You can see the barber stop cutting. The guy started leading in, going, what you say? Where is that so-and-so? You know, you need to let me do him. You know, man, why, why, man? And while he's talking, I'm looking around the room at the guys in the chairs waiting, saying within myself, I know you probably left home angry. See, what, what God is trying to do is get us to see that we do need the church need to take it to another dimension. We are really a hospital in this last day. Yeah. We're no longer mm-hmm. going to just church as usual. Mm-hmm. We are going to have to have lessons and messages that's going to build family. Mm-hmm. See, because that's what we have messed up in the beginning anyway with Adam and Eve. So we need to go back to old school. Let's talk about let's, who's depressed here today. That's one of the number one culprits. Who's depressed here today? I know you might be having problems with bills. I know you're having trouble with your children. Oh, that's Bible study. Oh, that's a whole different class. We don't do that on a Sunday morning. Well, I guess that's why they're not coming to church no more, because they're depressed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, somebody please hit the phone on start saying, please, just don't make everybody not be able to hear this, because I'm going to have to hang it up. Don't make sure nobody here, please. I appreciate it so much. Well, uh, in this day and age, we do so much uh, purpose and empowerment conferences and, and, and all this here, and, and, and people is coming and buying a ticket for their purpose, but they can't go home and and, 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 and figure out what their purpose is is because uh, they, they don't even know who they are. They have no idea who they are. They, they haven't figured out that they are, are not put here to be abused. Yes. And you can preach purpose. You can Thank preach, you. You can preach uh, 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 so-called deliverance and raise your offering. So-called. You and it ain't going to save nobody. You, look, look, listen, we bring in preachers that we're going to pay five ten thousand so dollars $10,000 a talk. piece, okay? And, 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 and nobody's going to talk about uh, Tom and Joan, who's beating the hell out of each other, mm-hmm. whose marriage is towed up, who 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 just had a fight in the car in the church parking lot. Lord help us all. Okay, and that's not the only thing. They ain't going to talk up. about uh, Jane and Julie holding hands in the sanctuary. No. No, they're not going to talk about that. No, because they're going to talk gonna about the same thing. Yeah, so cut the offering off, and they're going to leave, and they're going to get sued because they have serious ignorance. They don't know how to talk about Jane and Julie. Okay. That's why. Mm-hmm. I don't want to preach. Mm-hmm. But in the same token, if you're an evangelist, if mm-hmm. you're a minister, preacher, teacher, any of these things that we're out here called to do by God, and then when we go and, and walk in, in what it is that God has called us to do, we either we either uh, uh, sleeping with where we just left mm-hmm. or uh, uh or uh, uh, we're involved with them some kind of way socially or or, 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 or romantically by doing God's work. Well, see, what happens is a whole lot of families that are in this violent, should I say, say or should I leave situation, based on what you're describing, is because the person is not getting what they need emotionally. That's why, because mm-hmm. they don't want to get the help. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so now they want to blame you for something that they're insecure about. That's and it. I really believe that so many families are in trouble today. 
so many leaders are in trouble today because they're very insecure. We talked about that earlier on when I had my other guests on, on Living Testimonies. We talked about people who will not share their testimony. Mm-hmm. I have a problem with that. Yeah. God has a problem with that. Yeah. Because what he wants people to do to understand is that when you share your testimony, what it does, it helps other people say, people tell it all the time. I mean, I get calls, people from around the world and tell me when they see my show. Because you told what you were going through, just because you was real, ma'am, I'm not in that situation no more. My life is, is, is moving now. I'm, I'm out of that anymore. I don't have that kind of yeah, mindset no yeah, more. Yeah. But for you to think that your testimony mm-hmm. should not be heard and you're a pastor and you're a leader, it's something wrong with that. Please rip that out of Revelation. Please rip that, that chapter out. And there is no way that every lick that I took, every black eye okay. that I had and busted lip, that it was in vain. There is no way that God meant for that not to be repeated to somebody, somebody. to let them know that marriages can and make it can work. That's right. Violence. People can't go to prison and get out. And, and yes. listen, there might be some other issues. It might be some other stuff that you got, got, got to get through, but you can get through. That's it. right. God, God honors reconciliation. That's correct. God, God honors all of that. And guess what? And you don't owe nobody nothing. Thank you. Don't you. Owe nobody a story about, hey, oh, I was with John and he right. was with Susie. And who gives two flips about Thank it? You. Okay? Because God honors reconciliation. That's right. Okay? Uh, I, I'm just saying, is God did not let you go through what you went through, ladies and men, Thank for you. you to shut your mouth and sit yeah. on your testimony, Thank for you. you to shut up, and for some preacher, pastor, evangelist, teacher, prophet, or Bible said that you ain't supposed to talk about it. That is a lie from the pit of hell. I know. I Somebody told. else will be saved because told. of what Thank we will you. say. I was told I shouldn't talk. I never forget when I was married. Mm. Uh, my children, my, my, my husband at the time told me that his pastor told him, you need to sit her down. She talks yeah. Shut her up. Shut her up. <laughs> I knew that. I was yeah. doing good. I was she doing run so the good. household. She wear the pants yeah. because we're, we're, we're well-spoken or we're tired of the treatment that we have underwent, and so this is the place where God and the platform that God has created for okay. us to be able to tell another sister or another brother, no, you do not have to be a victim. You do not have to be a statistic. That's right. You do not have to be part of this uh, social norm that, that, that it's okay for you and your husband to slap each other around and everybody watch and everybody look. No, that's not okay and that's not normal. And what they say is just keep quiet. Just try to just make sure you don't no. talk about it. You know, because if you talk about it, then people are going to look at you different. You know, they're not going to respect you. Let's tell them this loud. No. no, we need to talk about it beyond this church. Yes. A lot of the people are going to, and I'm going to keep it real, real, real. A lot of people are going to their pastors for counseling that they should not. I'm very serious about that. I mean, it's almost like me going to my mama for counseling. So that's that. You've got to go outside of that. I'm, I'm, from the you years not years qualified that, to diagnose that. what's going on in go my outside. life. Everything go good with you? Listen, go get you some credentials. I'm okay. sorry. A lot of them are not there. <laughs> now, there are some who have been and got their credentials. Right, right. But I'm talking about on the level of, you know, the commonality. Let's use that. Because I'm too calm. You know, you, you, you're not going to be able to remember something. It's like my daughter, I can talk to her all day long. She's really not going to take it all in. She's going to hear me, but don't hear me because it's my daughter. You've got to get someone who is not going to be on that same page of commonality with you. It has to be someone beyond that, you know, so they can tell you when you're wrong. You know, I've had people come to my, come to my counseling sessions, and they'll say this. <laughs> It'll be a husband and a wife, and I may know them, and they'll say, no, you know, you something else. I thought you were going to be on her side. Yeah. I, I ain't yeah. on no side. Right. I'm on what's right. right and what is wrong. Yeah. And both of y'all wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we, we need to look at, are we going to do the holistic thing for families to work and people don't have to leave their marriages, people don't have to stay in bad relationships? You know, so do you leave or do you stay? Well, I say you need to stay when you're safe. Safe. Stay when you're safe. Say when you're the children, key word. Because a whole bunch of these women, they don't have to be getting beat with their children getting beaten, right? Yeah. Everything else. Mm-hmm. Stay oh, with but the I got a man. I'm good. Yeah, I'm getting taken care of every mm-hmm. night mm-hmm. as far as mm-hmm. uh, uh, loving mm-hmm. and all that. But my, but my daughter and my son is being raped. But that's a whole different story. Um, You know, common.
commonality. commonality. That, that, that is the key thing, you know, and, and that is, that's kind of like saying, you know, prophet is without honor in his own oh God, own oh God, town, yes, yes, yes. okay? Yes. It's kind of like that, you know, because I could go preach somewhere out of Houston mm -hmm. and they receive me so well, right. okay? But here in Houston, they may not, right. okay? But it's the same thing. Like right. if we go and sit in front of our pastors, our leaders, or, mm -hmm. or wherever we're at, they might say, well, you look good every day. You, mm -hmm. you guys don't look like you fight, but you don't see the holy hell that we have been experiencing right. behind the scenes. Are they close to the pastor? Oh, bro, oh, man, you got to slow it down, man. Now, you, you don't have to stop that, bro. Uh, you know? And then yeah. they go on to the next thing. You see that game, man? Yeah. They go on to the next thing. But she, she just said, he a fool. He a straight fool. Okay. But that, that went over your head and you missed it because uh, they're a deacon or they're a minister or they this or they that. And they a straight fool. But how you going to minister to me about I'm having a problem getting up in the middle of the night with my husband with pornography and you asking me to stay oh, there. Oh, no. You know why you can't minister You can't minister to him or you? Because the pastor's watching it. Oh, so this is the reason why you cannot go to your leader. You're going to have to go to somebody you really do not know. It's some mutual. And do your research. I'm going to leave that out. That's it. Make sure you do your research. I do research on all my doctors that I go to in the DMD. Uh -huh. I'm going to make sure I see where you went to school, what kind of grades you made in this yeah. area and surgery and everything. Because you're not going to be doing no anything yeah. with me. I'm trying to see how many lawsuits you had. Because we don't want to do our homework. Hey, Same hey, thing. That's amazing. But we'll just go. We'll just go. Same thing in a relationship. We'll just go into the relationship expecting things to be different but something you already know that you thinking that you got, like I thought you got it going on because the sex is good. Mm -hmm. Same thing, I guess, maybe she didn't have it like me. So you're thinking that you're the golden child. And so this is the reason why a whole bunch of people stay in that relationship. Oh, he got these little baby mama, so, you know, I'll make sure that she'll bring her kids over here. He want me and my baby. That's stupid. Why would you want to be staying in something like that? That you already see that he didn't take care of them, and now they got the vast spirit on them. You know, but on your children, he didn't take care of them. Same thing, a whole bunch of these pastors don't take care of their, their children. What makes you think you're going to be married to this man? You think he's going to, uh, he's going to take care of you? Don't leave you out. He's going to take care of you and the church. He can't even leave his own family that he left. The spirit, the spirit of, of abandonment. So mm -hmm. I, I, we got to look at doing the complete homework mm -hmm. when you say, should you stay or should you leave? Well, first of all, you already know you probably wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. So then you asking the question, should I stay or should I leave? When did you do your spiritual assessment? Was it after you got to the bed or was it before? Well, primarily, the majority of the time, it's either money or it's sex. Okay? One of the two. We do more research on our church and the choir, and the pastor, and all this here stuff that we want, the the, the dramatic, the theatrics part mm -hmm. of it, than we do about getting our own self-help. That's right. We need self-help. That's right. Us women, like, we wonder why we're on the edge all the time. We wonder why we're about to pop off yeah. all the time. Why we're just, you know, just anybody say anything mm -hmm. to us, and we, we ready to throw the coat back on the lady at McDonald's or, or whatever it is because we're so on edge yes. all the time. We don't make time for ourselves. We're, 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 we're worried about if we spend 30 minutes longer than we're supposed to at the nail shop trying to take me some me time that he might think I'm sleeping with somebody, somebody else. else. I went through. I couldn't even go grocery shopping. Listen. Lord help. Something is wrong with that. If somebody is accusing you every time you go somewhere of you you screwing this one or you this one or whatever, something's wrong something with that. Wrong. That, that. That is that is not godly. Well, it should be a time at some point when we're getting at in this place that you should. Yes. Now, unfortunately for me, when I decided, because I think it's the say they leave how many times? Uh, seven times before, yeah. ten times before they decided to go. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I left and went back. Yeah. But that last time was it. And I think he knew it. That's why he tried to kill me. He knew then I was not coming back. Now, the sad part about this thing is the stats are for just, I mean, it's just getting astronomical in regards to families that are really, really going through domestic violence issues at home. Do my sisters no more harm? And should I stay or should I leave? Our ultimate goal was to kind of 
talk about here for those that are watching that may be in this situation or that may be having a trouble taking it. Or maybe you're watching your own teenage daughter going through. Oh, that just breaks my God. heart today. Ooh. So many young girls I see that think it is love. I know I did because mm-hmm. I was only 18 when he right. tried to kill me. You know, I saw that. So this is what you do. You know, I watch my mom and she stayed with her man. So I said, you stay with your man. Yes. But when you have statistics that are constantly going up with women that are being either shot, some live, some die. But the bad part about it, the reason why we're doing this is because they're killing the whole house together. Mm-hmm. So man. we... We want to try and hope that you all will share this message. We hope that, sure, we've bounced around and said different things tonight because these issues are those that we talked about in Ephesians chapter 5, are those that have taken the Bible and made it be convenient or made it the old school system that the wife's not supposed to say anything, just be quiet, and the woman is not supposed to be heard in the church especially. So when we have issues that are going on not only in the house, but when it goes to the church house and then it's shaped by men who are at head, and then that shape, then start to shape men who they lead to believe this lie, mm-hmm. that this woman should be quiet and accept all things mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. She should just be quiet. Mm-hmm. And the women suffer. The daughters watch their dad and marry these yes. types of men. Mm-hmm. And so then where are we today in this society? Do we sit back and just have church, or are we going to turn church into hospitals and schools? Uh, that's what we do. I, I'm an outside center. I'm not going to do church as usual. People right. ask me all the time, and grocery stores and everywhere, where's your church? I see you on TV. They're like, where's your church? I like to come. I said, you're looking at it. That's it. You're looking at it. That's you're it. You're looking at it, and, and if you'd like me to come to your house, we can do a workshop at <laughs> your house. See, my, my, my ultimate goal is that we begin to educate the body. We can't create the disciple until they get first, like you said. you got to know who you are. Mm-hmm. And the only way you're going to know who you are when you get all this other stuff out of your head that you ain't. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not the A, you're not the B, mm-hmm. you know, and you're not all these ugly things that you've been told even by your own mom and your yes. own daddy. Yes. Sons and daughters, not only from the womb, have been abused by their own parents, but when you watch your parents come at each other, degrade each other, yes. and sit in the house and get up day after day and watch them then pack a Bible and go to church yes. and sing hallelujah oh, and lift your God. hands that you can hit my mom in the face yes. with. I know I'm yes. talking to yes. somebody. And you are. Hey. And then you done called out a name, and there you are on the deacon board and, and, oh, and taking up offering and, yes. and, and, and dipping people in the, in the pool to be, yeah. you know, yeah. be baptized. Yeah. Uh-huh. So here we are. That's why we're here today, to talk about these levels that the devil thinks he's going to keep playing, and you think I'm going to be quiet? Every breath I got, every fiber of my being, and don't care who do not like it, I am going to speak out to be able to see how I can build better families, mm-hmm. how I can talk to people who want to keep it real like yourself, Almost to say you don't have to do that. You know, uh, Dr. Murphy, I think that us women get it twisted because we say because we, first of all, our pride. Mm-hmm. We don't want to have to lose anything to leave. Yes. Okay. And the next thing is, is that if I leave, uh, 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 I don't get Louis Vuitton, and I don't, I don't get a, a Range Rover. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't get all of these things which I had before. If I let everybody know I'm being abused. Lord or help. if I walk out, or this, or that. And, and the thing about it is, is God said that you can have all of that and oh everything else in, in him. Yes. And you already were everything that you're going to be without a Louis Vuitton purse, without anything else. You already are the apple of God's eye. Well, see, everybody thinks that the man's going to make you complete. One thing no. I love about Miles Monroe, uh, oh, bless his heart, God. rest his yes. heart. I studied a lot of his books. One, yes. thing, one thing I studied was the one about being single. And one thing that stood out to me, which is so true, how can you expect to be two when you never learn how to be one? I was trying to say, oh, oh, I have somebody. My Jesus. How can you say that I am going to be two with join somebody together and you never learn who you are? Mm-hmm. You never 
together became one and felt good within yourself. I began to meditate on that and really start to really, really make love to sin. Yeah. Take me, child. Yeah. Take me to take care of me. So get me some accountability counseling when I start thinking that I want some sex. Yeah. Oh, thank God that ain't what my problem is today because I had yeah. enough of that yeah. to go to glory. Mm-hmm. But my answer is, what about when I feel like I want to talk to somebody with the opposite sex? Now, am I feeling lonely? Or am I feeling in this place that's making me think that I'm just a crossover in the flesh? So let me go talk about what's going on with my mindset today. So do we go and just say, no, you just need to leave. You know, I wouldn't tolerate that. No, what we're saying is go get your help. We need to be in the aisle right now to say, I'm going to get me some sound counsel. Yes. Because I cannot complete you. You do not complete me. I am complete only in him, That's according it. to Colossians 2 and 10, yeah. who is the head of all principalities and powers. Mm-hmm. And ain't nobody going to be able to complete you but God. That's right. So get yourself complete first mm-hmm. so that you can be able to at least add on to whoever you're trying to connect with that you say God put you with to make one. Uh, you, you, you can't go into, especially a new relationship, and be broken. Yes. Uh, you got to be an asset and not a liability Come on. in every relationship. And if you go in, half people can't heal Come you. On. Half, half broke folk can't heal you. <laughs> Especially if both of y'all broke. Yes. You, you know, I, I mean. How you going to fly two birds, both their wings broke? How you going to fly? Yeah. Lord, you know, it, 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 it ain't, ain't nothing can, can meet another eagle but an eagle. Come on. Unless we're on that same level. And until marriages get healed at the point where you can be on the same level. You know, I, I've been in ministry since uh, about 2010. It's mm. 2017, so yeah. about seven years now. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I'll, I'll tell you this, and this is the, the honest truth. The, the ultimate almost betrayal, I don't think was even going through domestic violence. Yeah. I think it was going to minister by myself. Oh, my God. I think it was going to be able to know that I was going to preach the word of God yes. and know that possibly my spouse wouldn't be yeah, that, that. It was that, that, something that, like something, ain't it? that that would, I mean, that would make you preach hard yes. or whatever. If you've seen them out there, because it would be like, go team, go. Yes, go, like, baby, team, go. You know. It don't work. That, that, I don't know what that, that's a spirit, though. Oh, man. If I could say that to anybody right now, that's you, feel, you, you still need to do it, though. Uh, Lord have mercy. That right there will make a woman or a man yes. give it to the people. I yes. mean, and, and, del- and the deliverance would be in the room. Yes, yes. It really would. It really would. It Mine really was would. like that. You know, he didn't go all the time. But what I did notice that when he did go, it was like the men received me better. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like you can see the men, you know, the deacons, like, hey, amen, amen. You know, yeah. But when, you know, when he wasn't yeah. there, they were looking like, what's she talking about? But and was she what, up here yeah, uh, with nobody and don't know your yeah, story, uh, don't know if you're married, yeah. if she's single, uh, oh, and you leave her out there open. Open, wide open. You know, and we kind of got off a little bit, but, uh, hey, anybody but it's real. Real. It's But it's real. But it's real. And so we, we're about to wrap it up. We didn't have, I don't know if you want to take any questions or comments. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, we got, we got 10 minutes. We're going to see if we got any questions. Uh, tonight, for anybody on the, on the Facebook, you can type it in there if you want to. Or you got one on the conference call line. We'll start on the conference call line first. Uh, please, those that are not talking, please keep your phone on star six. If you've got a question, we want to give that to her now. Is there one? tonight? Nobody? Okay. I hear you moving, but you ain't got nothing to say. Okay. <laughs> We're just glad you joined us tonight. Thank you for joining us. You want to say, hey, to everybody, who can you see? I can see. I don't need light TV. I can't hardly see. So I want people to know, I, it ain't that we ignoring you. I just can't see because of the light. You guys have any questions? Let us know. Or if there's a question that um, maybe you're not comfortable answering, yes. uh, 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 especially if email. your name, yeah, email them to us and she'll get them to I'll make sure I get them to her. Definitely. You know, because you you need to find out, you know, and then do you stand, do you leave? You know, I think it's one of those areas that people always want you to give them the answer. I always say, don't leave your marriage. Don't leave your marriage to stay. 
you know, we're going to have these times we're going through. But I always ask people, are you willing to get the help that you need? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you don't have them that's really willing. And one of the key questions I always ask, too, is do you want your next? That's very important to know. You know, Dr. Murphy, that's that's a big thing right there because a lot of times after there's been so much abuse, especially Mm -hmm. in the domestic violence realm, who have hurt each other so So bad that you don't get through. Yes. You do not get through it. And it's hard. It is hard to heal, especially in the sex department. Yes, you are. Because you got to look at that person Please excuse me. On top of you, you gotta, you gotta uh, uh, sometimes pretend like you're making love to them and like it's the greatest thing in the world, and it ain't mm-hmm. because you're still hurting from all of those hits and all of those times when it wasn't good. And you know that they have just slept with someone and you learned of it. You know, and they admitted mm-hmm. it. You know, who wants to say you, you know, I love you so much, honey? And, and that's know, a lie. It, 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 and it's a lie. It, 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 it's, a, it's a healing and deliverance process. It really, really is. And then some people don't ever get over it. They don't want to forgive. That's what the problem is. Or what happens is, is even in relationships who have got through the domestic violence, which is a very low percentile, yes. uh, and have stayed together, mm-hmm. uh, what happens is, is they start to substitute one addiction for the other. And now it's not physical abuse, right. but now it's mental abuse. Yes. Now it's... Uh, 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 um, you know, it's it's all kind of, uh, all kinds of other kind of abuse. Yes. They're verbally abusing you, and, and all these other things. And so it becomes. And then sometimes you'll build up what I call tit for tat therapy. Mm-hmm. It is. And now you're abusing them as much as they're abusing you, yes. whether it be verbally, mentally, emotionally, both. Uh, manipulation. Manipulation. Oh. to try to. Get Women who have hurt. been abused, who stay in the relationships and are with the domestic violence, yeah. manipulate through sex right. and money. You're going to withhold it if you do this? Or, I mean, that's notorious for us when you got a really bad headache or you're on your cycle and yeah. you know you're not. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never seen so many women use that one. That's old mm-hmm. now. You know, I just think you just want to say, I don't want to. Yeah. And we just didn't help. But Simple. that goes back there that submit yourself one to another. <laughs> really? See? Really? You know, because women, we have to understand we're supposed to submit to them, and they're supposed to submit to us. That, that don't belong that don't to you, go, boo. But that don't belong to them. And that's why we need to make a decision, are we going to stay or are we going to yeah. leave? I decided and I could unique. not stay uh, because I was being abused, right. not just emotionally, mm-hmm. mentally, but also physically. Yes. Yeah. I think that those who are in a physical, right yes. now, you hear me? Yes. If you are in a physical situation where you are being physically abused, you better leave right now mm-hmm. as I speak. Mm-hmm. You hear me? And, and I think we miss key things when we're in, because we become blind and we become emotional, we don't get a bag ready. If you are in a physically abusive relationship, you need a bag ready. You need money in there. You need an extra key. You need an extra set of clothes. Maybe for a few days, you need you need uh, uh, maybe a key to the house to get back in when they're not there. There are things that you need to know. You need all your bank account numbers. You need your credit card. Whatever it is that you need, kids' clothes, if you have small children, Mm -hmm. whatever that looks like. A face of money. You know, because yeah. I was so young, I didn't know any better. You know, I just would always line the house with whatever I had on, my bra, slip, or whatever, because I mean, yeah. I was just getting beat really bad. Mm-hmm. But I believe that we women who, back in the old school during my day, it was like, go back inside and quit the serving of beef, because they had not passed the laws yet. So it was like, you go outside with that, you're the serving of beef. Law yeah. helps today. Yeah. And so yeah. now that these laws have passed, we as women and men, we're held accountable. That's why I say I'm keeping my light on. We had my neighbor across the street who, when they knew that my light was on, that means, please, keep your door unlocked. I might have to run across oh, the street. I might have to run across the street. My God. Let me tell you, if you're in a situation right now, every time I think about those neighbors that would let me come in their house, and actually, they were putting themselves at risk. They could have been killed. Oh, they would hide God. me in their closet. So he would just drag me out like Brutus and take me inside and beat me again. Because he knew the police wasn't going to do nothing. Let me tell you something. If you in that situation. I know I'm talking to somebody that's watching. If you're in any type of physical situation, please leave. Because if you got children, it doesn't mean that he's just going. Sometimes they get so tired, they just kill everybody. Yes. Yes. So, you know, and we got a lot.
lot of women, I'm not against those who have been to prison and stuff like that, but a lot of these men are going through with these women, you know, they're coming out of prison, a lot of them had babies while they were gone, a lot of them done got married, divorced while they're gone, you know, and so many things have happened while these men are in prison. And when they get out, they already did trust you. They already knew you was up to something. And not a joker who you was with got the soul tied. He don't want to leave or she don't want to go. And then now you got all these problems, and then now somebody's going to get hurt. If you are in a abusive situation, and I must add, if it's mentally or physically abusive to even to your children, you have got to go. You need to go, go to somewhere, get some help, go somewhere where you can be safe, and please don't go somewhere where they know where you would be at your sister house or whatever, because they're going to go there. And many times when people are interfering, they want to kill the whole house. They kill everybody. They kill them, you're everybody, because they're mad because you helped them. And one key thing that, and that we haven't said, and I think we need to say, is you need to tell somebody that you're being abused. Yes. A lot of us that have been abused don't tell nobody, and so when we finally do come out and say, they're like, what? what? They can't believe when it. When did that happen? How? Well, I've never seen it happen. It's going on. Tell somebody that you're being abused so that, that God forbid, if something happens to you, yes. they know that this was something that, you know what, she told me this, she told let somebody know. And they will watch out for you. Yes. There's so many codes and things you can do. I remember when I was to go out and stuff, and we would, like I would say, it's red. That's all I have to say is it's red. And if you just say it's red, they already know. If you say, I'm going to Walmart, you need to let people know where you are at all times, especially when you are out and about and you know that they're watching, because mine stop me. If you're watching or they're stalking you or whatever, trying to see where you are, then you need to say, I'm going to Walmart, and it's 4 o'clock. Okay, you need to have that type of partner that can know where you are, at what hour, when you left, and then when you get there, if you should see them come through the door, your code is red. Mm-hmm. When you hear me say red, I'm at Walmart on 1960, send the police red yeah. in here. Yeah. So, you know, do not just, not like you said, not tell people. You should have some type of code system. You should have some type of escape plan. You should have some type of way that you save some money. You know, and prepare, because, you know, when you leave, it suffers the whole house. The children got to shift up, you know, and out. So, you know, you got to get them prepared. You got to have their school records and everything, because you might have to go underground. You might have to leave the city. You might have to get to a safe house. Any of those it things. It is what it is. It is. It is. So we've talked about a lot here tonight, but what's most important we want to talk about is that God is a God of love and peace. He's a God of forgiveness. This is what he wants us to do. It took me 15 years to forgive my children, Father. How long has it took you to forgive? You know, Dr. Murphy, I, I still struggle with that. You do? I still struggle sometimes with that. When the, what flash things yeah, come back? I, I have a flashback, and it, it's the hardest thing. That's why I say in the intimacy area, yes. that is the hardest yes, thing. Yes, it is. The hardest thing. Oh, God. That is a hard thing. And so thing. many women are just pretending, just saying, please get it over with. You know, I just bless God today that mm. there are those that are watching who uh, are going through or who have been in this situation. But even now that, you know, all it is is your body is just a piece of meat, just something just to say, I got this trophy woman mm-hmm. at home to do mm-hmm. or, or, or handle anything. <laughs> or she know if, how to say, she know if she don't, she know I'm going to whip her. You know, I'm gonna be Intimacy up. was not designed by God to be this way. My God, I'm no. Not. As much as it was for procreation, I, I do not believe it was designed it by designed God. It was designed for it. us to be able to love, mm-hmm. like the Bible says, love the church. Mm-hmm. We are the church. Yes. Love the church. Like Christ loves yes, the church. Back. Look. Love, love yes. one another. Forgive. You know, and it, it, and it is. I had to look in the mirror when the Lord really, really delivered me from that. And so you forgave him. He just took out your face. It took me 15 years to forgive him. Yeah. You know, but I did. And when I did, it did something. I believe it helped me to be able to do the ministry that I do today to be able to teach people. It's not going to be in the morning. It's one day at a time. Mm-hmm. I'm just here to let people know it don't have to take the 15 years. And, 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 and. I'm here because I don't want somebody else's testimony to be the same as mine. Yes, Lord. I don't want that. Domestic violence is real. 
Yes, people is. die. That's right. People don't make it out. People don't don't reconcile marriages. People don't love each other no right. more after it happens. And it happens every day. Every day. In in your family's life, it's happened in mine, it's yes. happened in Dr. Murphy's, and it's happening in fifty percent of probably households around or more. As we speak. Right now. Tonight is probably on the news. You know, and, and that's why we do what we do. For those that joined us tonight, we want to say thank you for allowing us to come into your car or in your home. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you. I'm thanking you in advance that you're going to hell for us to be able to reach those who may be going through some of the situations that we talked about here tonight. It's time for us to learn that we can grow up and grow up higher in the things of God, That's right. because even though it's difficult, like you said, for this process to go in, yeah. for the good thing is, yeah. you know, I kept on saying I let it go, but mm-hmm. people didn't know behind the scenes I was hating yeah. and manipulating. Yeah. But we need to understand that once we have been there, our responsibility now is to say, this is where I was, and let me tell you, mm-hmm. you can make it out too. That's what this is about. Quit Do my on. sisters no That's more it. harm, bro. Sister, do my bros. No more harm. Yes. We need to look at what are we doing, okay, as women. What are we doing mm-hmm. to make this thing the way it is? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times we stay too long. Oh. We stay too long, and that's the reason why a whole lot of us are not making it out. That's it. Yeah. Well, we enjoyed you tonight for staying with us. I don't know. Can you see any questions on there? I can't. No, I don't see no questions. We're going to call it a night. So glad that you all joined us. And we're going to see how many is going to share this. People look at it and go, oh, we got all the hearts and all of that. Yeah, and we yeah. love you for yeah, that. Thank you. Help but somebody. are you going to share it? Mm-hmm. Help somebody. Please help somebody tonight. Share it. I bless you for sharing your testimony and being so real, you know. Always. I was talking about that today. we got to be real in the reality. Okay, because you got to keep it real because it is reality. People are looking for real today. God bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. Y'all, the next time, oh, don't forget, Monday night, I didn't even share it yet. Monday night, we're going to have, remember, we're doing my series on the season of manifested exploit, changing and strengthening the guards. Y'all have a chance to listen to Apostle Dr. Gardner on two weeks ago. And so now we're going to have Pastor Dr. Elect Tabitha Whitten. Tabitha Whitten. She's going to be on. Yay. She's going to be on giving her words about changing the in the garden. Some of these things want to be changed. Uh-huh. A whole bunch of them need some strength to turn some things around so we can have the manifested supernatural before 2018. God bless you. We will see you on the next time. Love you so much for joining us. Bye-bye.